In this video, we will look at a couple of examples to practice working with two-sided stem and leaf plots. Example A, the girls and boys in one of BDF High School's AP English classes are having a contest. They want to see which group can read the most number of books. Mrs. Stubbard, their English teacher, says that the class will tally the number of books each group has read and the highest mode will be the winner. The following data was collected for the first semester of AP English. So we have the number of books read for the girls and for the boys. Draw a two-sided stem and leaf plot for the data and then determine the mode for each group. Help Mrs. Stubber decide which group won. So the group that wins is the group with the highest mode. All right, so let's start by making our two-sided stem and leaf plot. So to make a two-sided stem and leaf plot, you'll have the stem in the middle and the leaves on either side. So we can put the girls over here and the boys over here. So for the stem, you first have to decide what numbers do you need for the stem or what is the stem even gonna be? All of these numbers are two digit numbers, so the stem can just be the tens digit and the leaves will be the ones digits. And I noticed that we're going everywhere from one up to, or 10 up to 40s. So the stems will be one, two, three, and four. And now I can add in the data for each group. So for the girls, in the tens, we had 11, 12, 12, 17, and 18. So that took care of this data. In the 20s, we had 23, 23, 23, and 24. So that was this group. And in the 30s, we had 33, 34, and 35. And in the 40s, we had 44, 45, and 47. Remember that when you're making a stem and leaf plot, you should try to evenly space the numbers so that they line up in the consecutive rows. And you also wanna make sure that the numbers are in numerical order within each row. Now you're gonna do the same thing for the boys. So just put it on the other side. So we had 15 and 18 in the tens range and 22, 22, 23, 26 in the 20s. And you would continue in the same way. All right, so that is our two-sided stem and leaf plot. Now we wanna figure out the mode for each group. So we should look to see where the most frequent number is on each side. So for the girls, I noticed there's two twos here, but then there's three threes here, so that's a good chance for the mode. And there's no other repetition. So 23 is the mode for the girls. Now for the boys, there's nothing in the tens, there's two twos here, and then three fives here, which represents the 35. So the mode for the boys is 35. So that means that the boys should win because they have the bigger mode. All right, now example B. Mrs. Cameron teaches AP statistics at GHI High School. She recently wrote down the class marks for her current grade 12 class and compared it to the previous grade 12 class. The data can be found below. Construct a two-sided stem and leaf plot for the data and compare the distributions. Okay. So we're going to do something similar to what we did last time and constructing a two-sided or back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot. We'll have our stems in the middle. We can have 2010 class on the right and 2009 class on the left. And now we need to decide what our stems are going to be. The range is from 70 to 100. So I can make the stems be seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then I can just put in for each class. So for the 2010 class, I have 70, 70, 70, 71, 72, 74, 74, 74, and so on. And that is all of our 2010 class data. Now I'll go and do the same thing for 2009 remembering to keep everything in numerical order. And here we go. Now we want to compare the distributions. So 
What I notice is that in both classes, there was a fairly big range in scores from 70 up to about 100. In 2009, no one got 100, but someone got 95, which is pretty close. In both years, the majority of students got in the 70s and 80s. We can also figure out the mode for each year. It looks like the mode for 2010 was a 74, and the mode for 2009 was a 76. So I suppose it's possible that 2009 did slightly better than 2010, but I would say really they did about the same because overall there were more, most scores were in the 70s and 80s both times. And 2010 had a student that got 100 and a student that got 98, which were both scores higher than anyone in 2009.